We are getting brand new reaction from House Democrats after a closed door meeting about President Biden's future as the party's nominee. That meeting wrapped up just over an hour ago. Today could be a make or break day for President Biden's political future. And what Democrats ultimately decide will likely seal the president's fate. One Democratic lawmaker telling Fox News that there is currently no consensus. Now we're also awaiting reaction from both sides of the Senate. They're each expected to hold press conferences later today. Hello, everyone. This is Outnumbered. I'm Emily Campagno here with my co-host, Kaylee McEnany. And also joining us today, Fox News anchor, Julie Banderas, host of the Kennedy Saves the World podcast, Kennedy, and former New York congressman and gubernatorial candidate, Lee Zeldin. But first, let's go to Aisha Hosni, who is live in Washington with more details. Aisha. Emily, good afternoon to you. That meeting wrapped up after two long hours, and these Democrats are really trying to figure this out privately amongst themselves. This was a top street secret meeting. No cell phones allowed. They didn't want anyone to leak any information out. But as these Democrats were trickling out of that room, one of them told us that there is no consensus. Another one told us that they are still discussing. Uh, Representative Lynch told us that the majority of Democrats are for Joe Biden, but there are still some holdouts. Others simply just kept their mouths shut. Watch. Congressman, how come you don't support President Biden anymore? Stop all discussion. Congresswoman, how was the meeting? What was the outcome of the meeting? You guys got an agreement in there? What was the agreement? We are riding with Biden. Emily, there are eight defectors in the House today. They lost Jerry Nadler, who just flipped to support Biden again right before this meeting happened. Over in the Senate, they are about to get together for their lunch hour meeting. Democrats uh, are really not sure as well what to say to the press. Majority Leader Schumer says that he's for Joe, but the vulnerable colleagues there are not on the same page. People like Sherrod Brown, Martin Heinrich, John Tester, they're actually distancing themselves from the president. Sometimes asking questions, well, at least in my case, made me a better campaigner. And uh, I think uh, a lot of folks are raising some questions they need to get asked. But at the end of the day, we've got to beat Donald Trump. Now, House Democratic leadership is planning to have a press conference about 2 o'clock this afternoon. So perhaps we will learn more about whether there's unity in this conference. It did not sound like it as those Democrats left today. Emily? Aisha, thank you. All right, Lee Zeldin, what do you expect to come from today? I think that Joe Biden is going to be the nominee. Now, NATO's in town, and if at some point over the next few days the president really steps in it, maybe then the calls end up growing. Uh, Dean Phillips is looking pretty smart right now. You know, he was basically ostracized and uh, kicked to the curbs of the Democratic Party when he said a long time ago, going into the primary process, we can't nominate Joe Biden again. He can't do four more years. Now, the impact, if he's on the ballot, Joe Biden in November, down ballot, the Republicans are more likely to win the House, more likely to win the Senate. So these people are starting to speak up, but those who are speaking up are coalescing behind Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris was picked by Joe Biden as the one person who would be incapable of upstaging him. And she is further to the left, so she comes with own liabilities. These polls that are coming out, they're showing that Joe Biden's lost some points from the debate, also showing Kamala Harris even further behind. So, I, you know, the Democrats are, they're in a big-time pickle here, uh, but this is something of their own doing. They nominated the wrong guy. They should have had a process, let their Democratic Party primary voters decide on a different nominee. Here they are, I think, most likely, unless something major happens in the next few days where Joe Biden really steps in it, I think he's going to be the nominee. And I think that he's going to lose. I think that the Senate and the House are likely, more likely today than they were just a couple weeks ago as, as far as going Republican. So, Kaylee, to that point, if Kamala's polling behind President Biden. Both of them are falling farther and further. So what's the end of this small defections that we've seen that that list small but mighty potentially? What's their end then? So that's the question, right? So two things are true. One, Democrats are lucid enough to know they are in huge trouble. The notes coming out of this meeting are one Democrat said it was a sad atmosphere. Another compared it to a funeral. My personal favorite is from SEMA 4, the Democrat who said the morale of the caucus is at a historic low and then asked if it's like a funeral. He said it's that is an insult to funerals, okay? So that's the mood. However, the deal was sealed yesterday. 
Once he got Hakeem Jeffries, once Hakeem Jeffries came out and said, I supported him as the nominee, that compounded Pelosi supporting him, Schumer supporting him. And then after that, he got the Congressional Black Caucus support. They sealed the deal yesterday. This is the guy. Unless NATO press conference goes horribly, unless he falls over a sandbag and they lose all kinds of support, he is the nominee for all intents and purposes. The press coverage is going to shift to Trump and the RNC, and it's done. He's the guy. Jamie Dupree said it yesterday, to lead a rebellion, you have to have a leader. Or as my former colleague Chad Go Martin said, when you're in a baseball game and there's a tie, half defecting, half not, tie at home base, tie goes to the runner, and the runner's Joe Biden. So, Parsi and Harris, for a little bit, Kennedy, to that point, you contrast the reports coming out of this congressional meeting with that of the Democratic gubernatorial phone call, right, where reports said, oh, no, we, we would never have addressed him dropping out. We had this emergency call, but it was almost a surmising of what occurred, and certainly they didn't even toe the line, let alone go near it. So the question is sort of what changed? Because the declination of the president, I, I, I posit, that really hasn't changed that much. There wasn't a cliff that he dropped off of. We've been watching it for years. So what changed that all of a sudden emboldened those Democrat defectors or perhaps the media in saying out loud the emperor has no clothes? They, they're cowards and they need cover and they need cover from each other. That's the only way they would have this unified calling for him to completely step aside. Uh, they need Pelosi, who knows him best. They need Hakeem Jeffries. They need Chuck Schumer. They need all of them in order to give them enough cover to come out and safely say he's got to step aside. They all know he can't be the nominee going forward. They all know he can't win. Uh, they know anyone who has had a family member with dementia, Alzheimer's, or Parkinson's, where there is a, a long, slow decline, you know your ratio of good days to bad days eventually shifts, and you have more bad days than good days. Unfortunately, with the president, and I'm not diagnosing him with anything, but we are seeing that he has more bad days that they cannot hide. Those are only going to get more and more frequent, and they're doing the best they can. This is their last gasp at covering for him. They're going to lose that ability here very, very soon. So the next big mistake, the next blunder, the next series of sentences that don't go together, the next time he wanders off stage, uh, they have blown their ammunition. And now there is nothing left, and they're going to be stuck with someone who is physically and mentally compromised. And that is devastating for the country, not just his party, but for the country. Yeah. So as we approach the DNC, what are they to do? I feel like I'm in Wimbledon, right? Because we have he's the guy, but there's no way he can be. Everything is in the air. It's like the war of the five kings. Yeah. How can we predict yeah. but with something such serious stakes? I agree with Leah. I agree with Kaylee. He is going to be the presumptive nominee. There's no question. And I don't believe that the Democratic Party believes that Kamala Harris could bring them home. Even though I'm very surprised that a lot of Democrats are turning to her saying that she's the best bet, she's the worst bet for the Democratic Party. As far as the White House covering up Joe Biden's cognitive decline, that is, like you just mentioned, something that did not happen overnight. I'm very familiar with Parkinson's disease. I wouldn't necessarily say he displays those. Uh, functions and symptoms, but he certainly does display some symptoms of cognitive decline and sundowners. Sundowners is something that is very common among elderly people that after the hours of five, six o'clock, they start to become disoriented and, and confused and cannot speak in two full sentences back to back. Why do you believe that is why 10 to 4 is his prime time? And he has, and I just want to mention one thing, this meet meeting coming up, the conference with NATO is going to be do or die for him because he has bragged about NATO. That's like his, mm -hmm. his claim to fame, right, during the debate, during the interview with George Stephanopoulos. Well, when he has to meet with NATO, the world leaders are looking at our president right now and knowing he is weak and he's fragile. Uh, and, and that is not going to look good on the world stage. No, indeed. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.